Welcome to Universal Man. My name is Mark Weppet, and I'm here to help you play a bigger game with your life and become a man that you admire by mastering yourself, optimizing your lifestyle, and conquering your goals. And today I am back with the second episode of the Enter the Omni Game series, where I teach you how to play and win the game of life, which I call the Omni Game. And I think it's really interesting because this concept is starting to spread. It's a it's an idea that's always been around, like seeing life as a game. But uh, just recently, I saw an interview uh, that Kevin Hart did on the Joe Rogan podcast. And Kevin Hart, he's one of the biggest uh, you know comedians and actors on the planet right now. And what what regardless of what you think about him or Joe Rogan. You can't deny that, you know, he's incredibly successful. And, you know, Joe Rogan has, you know, he's echoed similar sentiments and he's incredibly successful. And this idea of seeing life as a game is really, really powerful because it is. It's like if you learn the mechanics, you understand how it works, well, then you can win. And that's what I want to be diving into today because I think many of us feel like we're not winning. We feel like we're losing. We feel like we can't get to where we want to go. We feel stuck. And a lot of that comes down to, I think, because we don't get how it works. We don't see, like, how do you score points in a way that's actually true and good and aligned? Like, what what are the skills you need to master? And so today, what I'm going to be looking at in particular is what the core mechanism is for leveling up in life. And I call this the resonance ladder. And when you learn how to look at life through the filter of resonance, it's really going to change the way that you do things. So it's like if last episode we talked about the different teams that you can play on in the game of life, you know, the light side and the dark side, then in this episode, it's going to be really about how do you start playing the game. Now, before we get into this proper, I want to take a second to tell you guys about a free guide that I've written. I'm calling it Anabolic Optimism. And what it does is it breaks down the stuff I talk about here and goes into an even different direction with it. It goes into the really the mindset aspect. And in it, I teach you seven axioms that help you build an anti-fragile mindset. Now, what does that mean? It means instead of just having a strong mindset, well, a strong mindset can still be broken as long as the force is great enough. An anti-fragile mindset mindset actually is one where it gets hit it becomes stronger it's kind of like the hydra you cut down one you know one head and two more sprout up it's kind of it's kind of like that it's this idea that like no matter what happens to you you end up stronger and in a better position than you were before and it's kind of a counterintuitive mode of thinking but once you get get it down you really start to feel invincible. So if you want to check that out, it's a really good guide. You know, I put a lot of effort into my free stuff. Click the link below and get it today. Okay, so let's get down into this. What we're going to be talking about today is resonance. All right, resonance is the core mechanic of what I would call psychomagnetics. Okay, psychomagnetics is my terminology for utilizing the power of consciousness. And resonance, this is not something just, you know, special to me. This is a, a, a common understood concept across different disciplines. You know, in science, it's, it's about waves moving in a harmonic fashion. Okay, in music, it's about, you know, notes being in key or in harmony and that sort of thing. And we can see how this plays out in the world. When things resonate together, uh, they there's a transfer of force, which is very, very special. So, for example, like if a bridge is not tuned acoustically well enough, then a wind, like a breeze or a gust of wind or whatever, if it comes at a certain angle and at a certain frequency intensity, the bridge will start to oscillate, start to resonate with that wind. And guess what? The whole bridge can shake and even collapse. It, resonance is also the thing behind uh, people being able to, you know, you, you, you bang a, a, a wine glass and you hear the pitch. And if you can sing at that exact pitch, if you can match the resonance of the wine glass and you sing really loud, it's going to vibrate the whole glass and eventually the gla glass will shake, will, will break. And so, this is a, a really powerful concept in physics, but it also applies psychologically. So let's start by looking at what psychomagnetic resonance looks like just personally, just inside of you. OK, so if I have an idea and I share it with you and I ask, hey, does this resonate with you? What does that mean? Well, we humans, we kind of experience life in a vibratory manner. 
and what you're looking for when I say, does this resonate with you? I'm looking for, like, does it click? Do you feel this part of you that resonates in response? It says, hmm, that rings true, rings true. That whole terminology, it's a resonance term. You can see it in the most basic things. So it's like, if I say the sky is green, there's a little part inside of your brain. It's not even logical. It's not even like really thinking hard. It's just, it just immediately resonates with mm, false. Wrong. There's a, it's like dead. It's a dissonant sort of feeling. But if I say the sky is blue, all of a sudden, hmm, there's a ring there. There's a truth to it. And this is mental or rational resonance. Okay. There's different kinds of resonance. So like what happens when the head and the heart, both meaning the rational part and the emotional part resonate? Well, that's when you get that that real good click, okay? So like, let's, let's do an example to walk through this. If you wanna get in shape, okay, and you rationally recognize that you have to, maybe your doctor said, you know, oh, this test came in, you should definitely get in shape. Rationally, you understand that. And if that's all you've got, and emotionally it's dissonant, it doesn't click, well, then you're gonna have to force yourself through it. That sucks, right? You can do it, sort of, but is it really gonna stick? Mm, probably not. But what if you it rationally sounds good, but emotionally, it also feels good. It's like, hmm, you know what? I've been waiting to get in shape. I'd like that idea. I think that would be good for me. Well, if you have your head and your heart on the same page, well, then you're probably gonna be able to take some action. But maybe physically it doesn't resonate. Maybe physically it, it doesn't feel good, okay? Then you're gonna probably have some success, but it's also gonna, you're gonna suffer through the workouts. Now, what if you resonate all the way through the system? rationally sounds good, emotionally feels good, and also physically feels good. Well, then basically gonna have to hold you back from the gym, right? And this, you're gonna need a pandemic to get in the way. And that's what I'm talking about here with resonance is that it's a transfer of force, it's a transfer of emotion, of intentionality. And when you can create that click, that holistic click, so much stuff can happen. Look at all this floor oh, space. So much, with your robots in here, so many activities. This doesn't stop just within your own system, okay? There are different ways that you can amplify resonance. The resonance of an intention, for example, an intention to get something or to be someone, right? Technology is a big amplifier. It's like plugging in your personal rev resonance into a loudspeaker, okay? And this is why one person with a Twitter account can change the world. That's more or less what you know, Donald Trump or Jordan Peterson did, or, you know, you name someone who has taken their thoughts, the thoughts that resonate with them, and then plugged it into technology and boom, it's everywhere, right? But it can also be another way to amplify the resonance of who you want to be or what you want to accomplish. You can do it through other people. If you can make other people resonate with your intentions, well, then it's like taking your loudspeaker and plugging it into everybody else's loudspeaker, right? And this is how the people at the very top of the world rule the world. <laughs> They have, they can speak an intention, it can resonate just up here in their head, and they put it out, and then it resonates through all the people who work for, th for them, and through all their technology, and then they can make massive shifts and changes, right? And if you understand how this resonance works, not only can you change your life in however way that you want, but you can also change the world around you. The biggest problem though is that most people don't know how this works. They get caught and locked into different kinds of resonances that maybe don't work for them and they don't know how to shift out of them. They feel like they're a slave to the stuff that feels sort of right or feels sort of good or maybe they don't have any feeling at all and they're just in dissonance and they just want to grab at something to escape, okay? It's like we need to know how to shift these vibrations in order to, to have any sort of control over your life. Otherwise, you're basically just going to be controlled by the people who have more leverage than you. And this is what we see. We see a ma uh, the majority of our population just kind of operating like zombies, hooked into porn, into video games, into bullshit politics and all this kind of stuff. And the people at the top are just kind of like these puppet masters. And you're not really living your life. You're just living this thing that's been programmed into your environment, into your subconscious, and you're not really you. The solution is to learn how to work the resonance ladder, okay? This is the way in which you can start taking control over the things that you click with mentally, emotionally, and physically. Because if we can create that click in the right directions, then we're gonna be able to get reliable, consistent action and change out of you. And that's how you start winning in the Omni game. That's how you start getting the life that you want is by doing the things that will get you that. 
But in order to get yourself to do the things, we got to figure out how to think the thoughts and feel the feelings, right? It's like we got to get the whole system lined up and the resonance ladder is what's going to help you do that. So how does this work? So before we get into the full ladder, let's just talk about what one rung of resonance looks like. How do you induce it and that sort of thing? Basically, what you need to do is you need to create an identity shift. You need to be able to envision a you that is different and better than the current version of you. And if you can find that vision and you can feel it and it clicks, it clicks mentally, you resonate with it rationally, like, hmm, I could do that. And then emotionally, it's like, hmm, I want to do that. That's what we gotta find. We gotta find that vision of that person that you wanna be. So I'll use some examples here from my own life to, to paint the picture of what I'm talking about, okay? So like, when I graduated college, I had a software engineering degree, I was working in software engineering, and I didn't like that, didn't click with me, there was something dissonant in here. And it's like, I wanted to have a career in self-development, and I wanted to be doing something that I was uniquely suited to do, to serve the world in the way that I felt like only I could do it. And that was my desire, and that clicked with me, I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I held it. And that resonance, it became like my compass. And I started following it, and what I ended up doing is, I was like, oh, I know what I can do. I, I was going through my reboot at that time, I quit porn, I saw a community that needed my help, and I was like, you know what, I could be that guy. Boom, that was my first rung of my ladder. And as soon as I had that vision, I had free energy. I was so motivated. And then I could change. I could not, and not just change, like make the, the steps toward building the business or whatever, but all the surrounding changes in my discipline, my lifestyle, all that kind of stuff. And obviously it was, it was hard and challenging, but I had the energy. And that's what resonance is about. It's about learning how to tap into free energy, tap into voluntary flow states. This is where the secret, the, the, it's, it's not the philosopher's stone, it's the product of the philosopher's stone. That's what resonance is, that kind of control. So after I build up a career doing that, it's like, all right, well, I wanna take it to the next level. I wanted to be like the top of that niche. And so I partnered with NoFap and you know, I built a program with them and that was great. And then you know, the next identity shift is, you know what? I wanna go beyond just quitting porn. I wanna help guys holistically level up in their lives. And that's where Universal Man was born. Okay, but at that time I was still a one man show and it's like, all right, I like where I'm going. I got energy, but what's the next level? I know I, and I know I needed to hit that. And I was doing everything. I was doing all the email, all the support, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, you know what? I wanna be a pure creative. I wanna be 100% a creator and not have to deal with all that other stuff. And so that identity shift gave me power. And then I hired employees, uh, a couple of guys who helped me and it's made a major difference. It's set me free and I've got more and more rungs and rungs. Th th this is how the resonance ladder works, is you need to have a series of compelling and authentic identity shifts that will release free energy and drive you forward, okay? And this is hard to find at first, because usually people are trying to think a little too big at first, and there's also some other stuff that we'll be getting into it in a second that gets in the way, but like this is the heart of generating your power. Now, it's important to say that while you're doing this, it's gonna feel a little strange, and people get hung up on, is this authentic? It's like, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit in my video in the Man of Action series where I, I talk about the concept of brain bridging, where you think like the person that you wanna be. Essentially, this is what you're gonna be doing, but like, I wanna give you a, a tweak here, because most people think you gotta fake it till you make it, you gotta act like that person, and even if it feels inauthentic, that's what you gotta do. And in a way that's right, but I hate the wording of fake it because it's kind of like this, right? Real, like if you're really walking the resonance ladder in an authentic way, then you're much more, you're not faking anything in the same way that a seed, you know, for like a oak tree or whatever, as it grows, it's not faking that it's a tree, right? It is, it's like, <laughs> it is a tree. It's like, yeah, it might be in the seed format, but like it is 100% authentic to say that it is also a tree, right? And that's what this is about. It's about you becoming more you, all right? And you have to be able to step into this mentality of like, this is who I am. Whatever that next rung on your ladder is, you have to be that person. You have to see yourself as that person. Right? And this is what gives you the capacity to keep moving forward. Okay, you might be thinking, all right, this residence la ladder sounds cool, but like I've got an identity that I want to step into. I know who I want to be, but I'm still getting like majorly stuck. I'm, you know, having trouble like inducing these flow states and this resonance that you're talking about. What gives? 
Well, there's more to the story, okay? So if climbing the resonance ladder is kind of like climbing the mountain, well, you're not just doing that. You're also going to have to slay the monsters along the way. And the monsters are projections. Projections are <laughs> basically you projecting your worth on something else. It's, it's the reflection of a previous wound. So let's walk through this. Where, what the heck are these projection things? Where do they come from? How do you deal with them? So when we're born, you can think of us as these kind of perfectly whole beings. You know, we're perfectly in tune with our sense of dignity. You know, there's no baby with, that's self-conscious. You know, they just know what they want and they, you know, freely vibe and ask for it and that sort of thing. And um, we're all, we all come into the world like that. But the problem is we all get hurt. And we get hurt by having experiences of rejection. Basically, the world sends the message that you're not good, you're not lovable. And what happens then is that our dignity, our internal psychomagnet, if you want to call it that, it gets fractured. It's like, you know, you take you have this big magnet and you hit it with a sledgehammer and a piece of it breaks off. Now, this piece, it doesn't disappear. And when you break a magnet, it just creates a smaller magnet. OK, but the, the poles then are reversed on it. And this little chunk of your of you, this little wound, it floats around in your subconscious. It'll get embedded in anything that seems like it'll take the pain of that now hole that exists inside of you away. So, for example, all right, maybe you get like a simple example that you can so you can see how this works is like maybe you get rejected by girls, psh, knocks a piece off of you, and then that piece floats around and embeds itself in maybe porn, okay? And when you feel bad about yourself, like, oh, I don't feel good enough, you can turn toward porn and it'll make you feel good. It'll give you this illusion that you are good, that you are valuable, that you're this high status guy, and it covers up the initial wounding and lets you avoid that pain. But the problem is it doesn't heal it. In fact, it perpetuates the idea that, yeah, you're not good enough without that sexual affirmation. So you need to either actually get it or simulate it in order to be okay. This can happen in so many different ways and show up in so many different styles. But the heart of it is it's like you're trying to fill a hole of lack by looking outward. It's like there's some kind of pain and you feel some kind of like, hmm, that thing over there, that'll that'll solve my pain. Problem is it, it just, it just doesn't. And it doesn't lead to growth. And in fact, instead of being like a ladder upward, it's just a slide that spirals you downward. This is what all addictions are in general. It's like, you don't even need to have any sort of special, like explicit sort of wounding, just the whole world that operates on this vacuous um, mentality will cause it in you. And if you want to understand more about how that works, then watch the previous video. So it's like as you're going through your day, you know, you could either do the things that are going to level you up, that are going to be moving you up your resonance ladder, that are going to be reflecting the person that you want to be, or you could follow the, re the, the fake resonance, the, the junk resonance of projections. So it's like maybe you you work on that project or you just play video games for a while. Maybe you eat that thing that aligns with your diet or you just eat a bunch of donuts, right? That's the thing that happens is that like these projections, they create a very strong resonance in the moment, but later they just remind you how broken and far apart from where you actually wanna be is. The big thing to understand about projections is that they sacrifice means for ends. Or another way of looking at it is they sacrifice identity for spoils, okay? And this is what gets people most you know, locked up in their life. Okay. Uh, I, I can give you a few examples. All right. So an obvious one is a drug addict. Okay. They get the ends of feeling good, at least when they're taking their drug. Right. But they sacrifice their identity because <laughs> eventually if you're a drug addict, then that's pretty much what you become. Right. You're not going to become that person who's, you know, a good husband, father, whatever, you know, who is a good business owner, who is an artist, who is any of these other pieces of identity that are more valuable. You're just going to be a drug addict, but you get that high. Right. When you're high. And then other than that, it's just a continuous devolvement. Right. Another way it shows up and blocks people is through like shadow careers. Uh, I think um, the guy who wrote uh the War of Art. Why can't I remember his name? You can look it up. The, 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 war, the war of Art guy he talks about these shadow careers 
um, where Stephen Pressfield, <laughs> that's his name, Stephen Pressfield, he, he talks about the these shadow careers where you think this is what you're supposed to be doing, but it's really just a distraction from what you're actually supposed to be doing. And this happens where you mistake an attraction to the spoils to an attraction to the identity. So a lot of people, they want to be, you know, famous rappers or musicians or movie stars, right? They resonate with the spoils of those identities. But most of them don't actually like the identity. They don't actually like living that way. In order to be a truly successful artist, you got to spend a lot of time on your craft. And that's hard work. Creative work is hard work. You know, being an actor, that honestly sounds boring as hell. You're on set for hours and hours to shoot five minutes. And then like, yeah, that's that's definitely not for most people. And so people get hung up on trying to get certain kinds of spoils, but they're, they actually are completely disconnected from the identity. And so they get this stuck. They get really stuck because they're, that's not an authentic rung or direction on their resonance ladder. So what can you do about this? How do you navigate these projections and keep them from pulling you into the vortex of becoming someone that you don't want to be? Well, the heart of it is you have to look at the other pole of the magnet that's being created when you're triggered. So a triggered state is just a state where a piece of that, that your worth is being projected on something else. So maybe, you know, if you've embedded your worth into money and you see your neighbor, he just got a fancier new car that's more expensive than the car you have, you just get triggered. You feel, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I want that car. I want this car, blah, 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 blah. And you're, you're entering into this vacuous cycle. Okay. This is where the dark side comes from. It comes from this wounding and then embedding of your worth and value into external things. So what do you do in that scenario? Well, Instead of looking outward, you have to look inward. It's like Tony Robbins got a great quote. It's like energy goes where attention or energy flows where attention goes. Okay. So if you just keep looking at that car, you keep thinking about the car you want or whatever, energy is going to keep going there. It's going to keep perpetuating the separation. But if instead you connect with the part that's hurting, you connect with the hole that, you know, that, that, that empty spot inside of you, the black hole that I call it. If you connect with that, well, then you can start reversing this process because here's what happens. The only way to repair a magnet that's been broken is how, do you know? You got to melt it down. <laughs> you got to melt it down and reforge it, okay? And then you got to recharge it and that sort of thing. But like the way that this works in a psychomagnetic sense is that if you connect with that part that's hurting and you're, you're present with it and you're affirming of yourself be saying like, hey, you don't need that thing. Hey, you're OK. I'm here with you in your pain. If you do that, that actually undoes the wound that happened in the first place. It undoes that rejection. That's the only way to heal it is like if your projection is the result of some rejection, then you have to heal it through affirmation and presence. OK, if you just keep trying to run away from yourself and keep trying to run away from your pain, you're just going to continue this thing going. So when you tune into yourself, it's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. And this is the crucible that heats your spirit up, that heats their psycho magnet up and allows it to be malleable so that you can actually take that shard out of that bad thing or out of that dysfunctional thing and reintegrate it back inside of you. So this is what I've explained a bunch of times, like in my video on processing, releasing sexual cravings, the, um, where I talk about the mastering your neurochemical workflow. Like I go into much greater detail in all of this, but the, the heart is to recognize that you need to stay centered in yourself. And I call this centering. Centering is the process of bringing your head and your heart together. I have a whole course basically built upon this idea, because if you can hold them together, then you can reforge the pieces that are broken. Now, what does this amount to? It gets really interesting when you look at this then on a high level, what life becomes, what the omni game of life really is then. Okay. It's actually similar to a lot of very popular video games and things like that. Um, like how many video games start with you waking up, you were this great, powerful person, but something happened to you and you lost all your powers and they've been scattered all across this world. And now you have to go through and level up and acquire and, and bring everything back. Right. It's like how many video games start with like some special crystal that gets broken and all of the shards go out all over the world and you got to go and fight these monsters and clear these dungeons and regain your powers as you go. It's like that's essentially the story of real life. All right. It's like 
you're going to be climbing this mountain. You're going to be climbing up your resonance ladder. You're going to be becoming more and more you. And each rung that you hit and successfully integrate and adopt, then you unlock a whole new level of free energy. So it's like maybe at first you can barely do anything. And so like you start with something like, all right, I'm just going to clean my room. Okay. It's like, you know, you're going to Jordan Peterson it. I'm going to start here and I can get that. And when I can get that basic self care down, well, that starts actually happening for free because I, I, I just do it naturally. I built the habit and that's actually going to create more energy. And then that surplus of energy can then go into the next rung. And then that next rung, maybe it's a social connection of friends and you build that up and then that's going to become automatic. And then that's going to like give you free energy, maybe connections, inspiration, whatever. And that's going to take you to the next rung. And so you're leveling up like that while having to overcome your projections having to fight these monsters like what happens in video games well you slay monsters and what do they do they drop you know treasure and experience and that kind of stuff right that's what projections are okay there are these monsters that come up and say hey you suck hey you're going to die hey you're going to feel horrible unless you you submit to me and what you have to do is you have to plug into yourself and you have to be affirmative in yourself. And what that does is if you can muster that force and you can use your willpower to do that, it's going to create this power inside of you. It's essentially going to power you up. It's going to feel bad, but eventually it actually pulls that shard of you out of whatever that projection is. And when you bring that back in, whew, oh, you feel good. You actually have more energy then because you're not being weighed down by all these demons that are trying to pull you into the abyss. You get to the point where you can actually start living your life automatically. It becomes, instead of having to grind against yourself, you just unfold. You become like that seed that's growing into whatever plant it is. And, you know, we all have a different form, not when one isn't better than the other. It's like, you know, some of us are these great big redwoods. Some of these, some of us are like, you know, interesting little pitcher plants or flowers or whatever. It's like, we're all unique and we have to be able to find that resonance and follow it and trust it. And so there's so many, so much more to this. This is just, you know, the high, uh, the high level perspective of the most complex game that exists. So we're going to be going a lot further into all of this stuff, how to wield this power better, how to deal with all these projections, all this kind of stuff like that. But I'm hoping that this video has inspired you to start connecting with yourself, start connecting with, okay, what is that next step for me? What's the next rung on my ladder that I vibe with, really? And not a false rung, not something like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, a movie star or something like that, unless you actually are, okay? Like, be real with yourself and step it one step above where you're currently at that's still exciting, okay? And if you don't know where to go, start by removing pain. Start by removing dysfunctional, like seriously dysfunctional habits. You can check out my whole Man of Action series where I get into, you know, a lot of that sort of stuff, especially episodes one and two. So that's that for you guys today. Play big. I'll see you in the next one.